Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I, 25 female, grew up in a family where my older sister, Sarah, 26 female, has always been the favorite. She and I are about a year apart, but our lives couldn't have been more different. Sarah was the golden child in my mother's eyes. Beautiful, smart, and in my mom's words, someone everyone likes. My mom is a stay-at-home mom, and my dad has a decent-paying job, but money was always tight. Despite this, my parents made sure Sarah had all the financial support she needed, while I was largely left to fend for myself. Sarah's undergrad years were spent at a private university far from home, which cost around $30,000 per year. My parents paid for everything, from tuition to living expenses, so she wouldn't be burdened with the debt. Now she's in her final year of pharmacy school, and tuition plus living costs run her about $60,000 a year. My parents are still helping her out, contributing around $40,000 per year, so she won't have to take on too much debt when she graduates. In contrast, I chose to attend a public university close to home, which was about 20 minutes away. I worked hard to earn scholarships that covered most of my expenses, and I took on a part-time job to cover any extras, because I knew I'm not going to get any help from my parents, as my mother made it very clear. By managing my finances carefully, I even had some money left over. But even with this financial independence, my mother always managed to find ways to compare me unfavorably to Sarah. Growing up, I dealt with severe cystic acne that plagued me for about seven years, and I have scoliosis, which causes a slight limp. My mother and Sarah constantly made snide remarks about my appearance, calling me names and making me feel like I was an embarrassment to the family. It was relentless. One time, a family friend asked why I always looked down when talking to people and why I had a limp. Instead of being supportive or explaining my condition, my mother told her it was because I chose to walk that way and that I was self-conscious about my appearance. Over time, I became reclusive. I stopped attending family events and mostly stayed in my room, hiding from the people who were supposed to love me. My mother and sister's constant verbal aggression took a toll on my confidence, and it became a habit for me to avoid eye contact and shrink away from people. I didn't feel like I had a voice in my own home. In the last few years, though, I've worked hard to rebuild my self-confidence. My acne cleared up, which boosted my confidence, and I started holding my head a little higher. Last Christmas, I went to a family gathering, and some relatives didn't even recognize me at first. They complimented me, which felt amazing, until my mom stepped in, furious. She berated me in front of everyone, claiming I was selfish for not attending family gatherings more often and for letting people forget who I was. I was humiliated and left in tears. Despite everything, I've tried to be a good sister. During undergrad, I used part of my part-time job earnings to send Sarah extra spending money each month. I didn't have much, but I wanted to support her in the way I could, even though I received nothing close to the same amount. After undergrad, I went on to grad school, where tuition costs around $40,000 a year. When I asked my parents for a little help with living expenses, knowing they might not be able to afford both Sarah's and my education at the same time, my mom exploded. She accused me of being selfish, said I only cared about myself, and accused me of trying to make them feel inadequate for not being able to support both of us equally. I took out student loans and never asked for financial help again. After years of struggle, I graduated last year with two master's degrees and was fortunate to land a well-paying job. I moved in with my longtime boyfriend, who was kind enough to pay off my student loans up front so I could avoid the interest. I now pay him back in monthly installments, and together, we're saving up for our wedding and a house. Things were finally looking up, and for once, I felt like I was in control of my life. Last weekend, though, my mother contacted me out of the blue and asked me to meet her. She started by reminding me of all the support my parents had given me over the years by allowing me to live at home during undergrad and not charging me rent. Then, she said it was my turn to pay it forward by funding my younger brother's college education when he starts school next year. On top of that, she expects me to pay off Sarah's student loans once she graduates, so she doesn't have to worry about high-interest payments. 
I was floored. I asked if my brother and Sarah would be paying me back once they started working, and my mother flew into a rage, calling me calculating and selfish for expecting money back for my own family. She then went on a tirade, saying I'd always been jealous of Sarah because she was better looking, smarter, and just more likable. According to her, this jealousy is why I don't want to help my siblings now that I'm fortunate enough to be in a position to do so. I reminded her that I had worked multiple jobs, secured scholarships, and taken on debt to get through school. And I pointed out that I'd even sent Sarah spending money when I had so little myself. But she brushed this off, saying I'd had the privilege of attending undergrad debt-free thanks to their generosity. So I should be grateful and give back. She also insisted that my boyfriend and I have plenty of money now and that it would be selfish not to help my family. I explained that, yes, we're doing well, but we're saving for our wedding and future home, expenses that my boyfriend and I planned for together. My mother's response? She threatened to disown me and said that she and the rest of the family wouldn't attend my wedding if I refused to pay for my brother's education and Sarah's debt. She accused me of breaking apart the family and being petty. She called me on Wednesday telling me to come pick up my baby pictures because she was cutting me out. When I arrived, she was sitting there with scissors, slicing up my childhood photos, saying she regretted having me. She even told me that my scoliosis and acne were punishments for being an ugly person inside and that she wished she'd smothered me when I was a baby. I've been crying for days, feeling conflicted and hurt. My boyfriend is supportive and tells me to cut ties with her, but it's hard to let go of my family even after everything they've put me through. I feel guilty for not wanting to help my siblings, especially my brother, who hasn't done anything wrong. But I also feel like I've been used and put down by my mother and sister, and I'm tired of being treated like a second-class member of my own family. My mother and sister are now telling extended family that I'm being selfish and refusing to support my siblings out of jealousy and spite. Some relatives have reached out, saying that I should compromise and maybe just cover half of my brother's tuition as a gesture of goodwill. They argue that I'm being too calculated and should consider the importance of family. But I can't help but think about how they've always treated me and how my mother has repeatedly dismissed my pain. I don't want to let go of my family, but I don't want to keep sacrificing myself for people who seem to care so little about me. So, read it. Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay my siblings' tuition and debts? Opie's family has clearly favored her sister for years, and now they're trying to guilt trip Opie into sacrificing even more for her. Opie has worked hard to get where she is, and she has every right to focus on her future. Opie's mother's behavior is aggressive, and I'm glad Opie is standing up for herself. And now let's hear the community's opinion. You're absolutely not the a-hole. You've been treated unfairly for so long, and now that you're successful, they want to take advantage of it. Family doesn't mean you owe them a free ride, especially after all the hurtful things they've done. Stand your ground and focus on building the life you want. I understand why you're feeling guilty, especially toward your brother, but don't let your family guilt trip you into sacrificing your well-being. Maybe if you feel comfortable, you could help a little with his expenses but only if it doesn't compromise your plans. You're not responsible for your sister's choices. Not the a-hole at all. Your family's treatment of you is beyond toxic. They've taken you for granted, insulted you, and now expect you to foot the bill for everything? Your mother sounds aggressive, and you deserve so much better. Protect your peace, and don't let them manipulate you. Update. Yesterday, I called my mother and told her exactly how I feel. I let her know that I won't be paying a single cent toward my siblings' tuition or debts and that I refuse to be guilt-tripped or manipulated any longer. I also told her, point blank, that her years of favoritism, insults, and emotional aggression have shown me what a truly horrible person she is. I added that she is no longer welcome at my wedding. My mother was furious and tried to turn it back on me, calling me ungrateful and saying I was abandoning the family. But I stayed firm and ended the call realizing that for once, I don't feel guilty. I feel free. My fiancé and I are now focusing on our future, and I'm committed to surrounding myself only with people who truly care about me. Thank you, Reddit, for helping me find the strength to stand up for myself. My fiancé and I are having a wedding in a few months, 
and are just planning on having a small wedding with around 200 people that we know really well. We plan on having it at a local church and then having a bonfire party on the beach. My mother-in-law and aunt soon got involved and kept telling us how we need to change the wedding. Aunt said we can't do it on the beach because her cousin, who I met once when I was like seven and barely know, is in a wheelchair and can't access the beach. She invited like a hundred people I don't know or barely know, and half of whom already decided to come. My mother-in-law called the church, without our permission, and told them to reschedule the wedding because her stepson is having a wedding a month after mine, and she wanted our weddings to be back-to-back, -back, so she only had to make one trip here. We live three hours by train, ducking ridiculous. Mother-in-law invited 200 people to come, half of whom are coming over from Ukraine, and I assume don't speak Polish or English, so I don't know how the duck that's going to work out. My fiancé doesn't want them there either. I don't want random Ukrainians at our wedding, nor do I want to be introduced to people we don't even know at our own ducking wedding. This is ducking insanity, so I told the church to cancel the wedding and I made a Facebook post explaining what happened, why I am upset. People are trying to control our wedding and that we're changing the venue and city it'll be in. We're moving it from Dansk to Sopot and we will only be inviting 200 people that we know personally. Mother-in-law and aunt went apeflop on Facebook calling all of us and cursing us out on Facebook, and over calls saying we're traitors and we're ruining a special event for them, and we're ungrateful brats and that we turned the whole family against them and that we need to accept their help as they know best. Some of the family members are saying we should have done something to appease mother-in-law and aunt, but I say it's our wedding and nobody other than us have any input into it, and we reserve the right to not invite them. I say duck them. I can't believe this drama is happening in Poland. This is the BS that happens in America. Not the a-hole. Wait, 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 hold up. Your aunt invited a hundred people to your wedding? What the actual duck? Wait, who are these people who are inviting individuals to your wedding? What? Not the a-hole. Thank you for the laugh. Your wedding, your decision. It sounds like the two of you will have to plan everything from the beginning. Tell them nothing about your plans and invite them with only a couple of weeks notice just to make sure they don't interfere with your plans again. What a nightmare. Not the a-hole for cutting off your aunt and mother-in-law, because they're acting insane. But definitely the a-hole for some of the other weird prejudiced crap you're saying. This is not the BS that happens in America. Where on earth did you get that idea? Also, weird to assume that Ukrainian guests won't be able to speak English, seeing as English is somewhat widely taught in Ukraine. My father-in-law died two years ago, and it was very difficult on mother-in-law. They had a complicated marriage. I really have no doubt they loved each other, but it was toxic. There was quite an age difference, almost 30 years, and father-in-law was controlling and jealous. Mother-in-law liked being treated like a toddler, most of the time, but since they had a parent-child dynamic, she sometimes lashed out like she was his teenage daughter. It was a mess and very codependent. Mother-in-law struggled greatly with his death. Father-in-law had two children who were close in age to mother-in-law. She was close to her stepson, but in a playful bickering, kind of a flirty way. It was very uncomfortable to be around at times. Brother-in-law had never been able to maintain a stable relationship, and I always got the vibe that he was in love with her. Mother-in-law and I really don't get along great, but my kids adore her. I let her see them once or twice a week, because I know it is hard for her to be alone. The other day we had a family wedding and I went to the bathroom and found her in the hall, kissing brother-in-law. Mother-in-law saw me and pushed him off. She tried to downplay it but then admitted they had been spending a lot of time together. I asked if they were dating and she said she didn't know and then began to cry about missing father-in-law. I thought about it and I told mother-in-law if she does pursue a relationship with him, she cannot see my kids while she is with him and has to hide it. They are seven and five and I think it would confuse them and honestly, it is disturbing. I said as long as she could hide it, she could maintain a relationship, but she was just beside herself sobbing and accusing me of stealing her grandchildren. My husband thinks that is too harsh and we can't shelter the kids. Edited to add, mother-in-law is two years younger than her stepson and they were both adults when they met. Not the a-hole. Mother-in-law has issues. She needs to deal with them. The courts have decided that a parent role extends to step-parents. Example, Woody Allen and his daughter. Your mother-in-law is wrong and has to deal with the situation. Protecting underage children from unstable people is your job as a parent. 
I would suggest supervised and limited visits going forward. This is a breach of trust in family. You are sheltering the kids. They do not need that baggage. Perhaps when they get a little older, you can tell them why sleepovers ended and why Nana only visits once in a while. Yes, the a-hole. Some pertinent facts from the comments. 1. Mother-in-law is actually younger than brother-in-law. She was 21 and he was 23 when she married father-in-law. 2. Father-in-law was 50, married a 21-year-old, and was controlling and aggressive throughout the marriage. 3. Brother-in-law was actually more of a father figure to your husband than father-in-law was. 4. Your husband, who was actually raised in this family and knows way more than we do, supports brother-in-law and mother-in-law together. It sounds to me like the family dynamic never placed mother-in-law and father-in-law as the co-parenting matriarch and patriarch. Doesn't sound like their relationship was healthy. Honestly, that's way more likely to damage your kids than to explain to them that mother-in-law and brother-in-law aren't related and fell in love. It is weird, totally. But your in-law's family dynamic was always totally not okay, and this development isn't worse than grandpa marrying someone younger than his own son and hurting her. Let this poor lady be happy, especially if your husband supports it. I defer to the guy who would most likely see this woman as his mother and would find it super weird she was dating her other son, if that was the kind of relationship they had. It clearly wasn't. My sister has an attitude that everyone should cater to her the entire time. She doesn't know what boundaries mean and just ignores any complaint we'll make regarding her behavior. Whenever she visits me and my fiancé or our parents, she'll just dump her kids to everyone else and sit around with no responsibility. One time she was mad that my fiancé couldn't babysit for her kids because my sister wanted to go to a bachelorette party, but it was also my fiancé's birthday. So, she of course didn't want to stay inside watching someone else's kids on her birthday. Now my sister gave birth to another baby. The baby is one and a half months old. On Saturday, we had to attend my cousin's wedding. My fiancé wore her usual perfume. At the reception, my sister tried to dump the baby on my fiancé again, but she didn't do so because she smelled my fiancé's perfume. She then got mad that my fiancé wore perfume and said something like, you knew you'd be around a baby, and you're wearing a heavy perfume like that? My fiancé told her it's a wedding. She's allowed to wear perfume. Then she noticed my fiancé also had a body glitter lotion on, and my sister got even more mad. She called my fiancé insensitive for wearing perfume and body glitter, knowing she'll have to interact with the baby at some point. I told my sister that maybe she should stop trying to dump her kids onto other people. In this case, my fiancé. And if other people's scents and lotions bother her so much, she should care for her own kids for once. My parents called me insensitive for saying that to my sister, and how being a mom is not easy, and I was totally hard on her. They also said I'm the a-hole for defending my fiancé like that, just for wearing perfume and lotion, and how it's not that difficult to skip perfume and lotion so you can help someone else when they need to, and they called us disrespectful to my sister's needs and the baby. Not the a-hole. And I'm guessing perfume sales amongst your immediate family within earshot of this conversation just doubled. Skip perfume and lotion? For a baby? It's not even her baby. Why should she be ashy for the baby that isn't hers? Not the a-hole. But bruh, your folks need help. Not the a-hole. It was a wedding, and your fiancé isn't your sister's default babysitter, especially at an event. To that end, remind your parents of that simple fact. She's your fiancé, and you will always defend her when people are being rude to her. Your sister's needs regarding care for her children is 100% on her, not you or your fiancé. The fact that your parents feel differently is disrespectful of them. Throwaway account I, 22 female, recently graduated university. I live with my parents. I do not pay rent, but I do pay about half of the bills of the house. The house me and my parents live in is technically mine. It was left to me by my grandparents. My 36 female sister is pregnant and has decided she wants to give birth in our city so she can be close to our mom. She announced that she'll be moving in our house a couple months prior to her giving birth and is going to stay until the baby is around six months old. Now, I want to say I love children. I graduated with a degree in teaching and I am working as a full-time teacher. I still live with my parents to save money for my masters. I won't lie, I found it a bit entitled that my sister is just going to move in with us, not even ask, and stay for nearly a year, but hey, she's family. 
I told her I'm happy for her and will help her to the best of my abilities. This means I spent some mornings with her and the baby so she can eat, shower, sleep, maybe feed the baby, do their washing, run any errands she needs me to, run to the grocery store for her, cook lunch, dinner, clean up the apartment, this sort of thing. I also stated that since I'll be working 35 hours per week, mixed evenings and mornings, I might need to leave the house and stay with my boyfriend for some days per week, if my niece keeps me up every night. That is because I need to sleep. I cannot be around children and be sleep deprived and irritable. Best case scenario, I am a crap teacher. Worst case scenario, there's an accident. I also stated since virus restrictions have been lifted where I live for months now, I will continue my social life as is, which is a small circle of friends in weekly or bi-weekly gatherings. I mostly see my boyfriend. I also promise to isolate or stay someplace else if I attend a big event, like a concert or party or whatever. I thought I was pretty reasonable in accommodating. However, my family has been treating me like I am a monster. They keep saying how I don't love my sister for not offering to babysit every morning and take on more responsibility. I have Elhurst Danlo syndrome. It is not too bad, but I cannot lift heavy objects for long amounts and I cannot in general do heavy work. It results in a lot of pain for me, swollen tendons, debilitating joint pain, etc. I do not want to lift a 3 to 4 kilogram baby constantly because I will be in constant pain. It will also disrupt my work greatly. I've also been yelled at for wanting to party while my sister will be going through the hardest thing in her life. Eventually I snapped at my whole family and told them that it is not my responsibility that she decided to have a baby and that I don't want to be forced to completely change my life for them. They told me I'm an a-hole and everyone is kind of mad at me. I thought I was pretty reasonable. But having so many people call me an a-hole is making me doubt myself. So, am I the a-hole? It is not technically your house. It is your house. Why would you pay rent to live in your own house? Anybody else living there should pay rent to you. That includes your sister and parents. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. What you describe sounds more than generous. No one forced her to have a baby, and she needs to take responsibility for that. If your family forces you to babysit every morning, why won't they lend a hand? It's their precious grandchild after all. You have a career to take care of, and all the points you made are very valid. You shouldn't put your life in jeopardy for someone else's baby, family or not. If I were you, I'd tell her exactly what I'm helping with, and if she feels entitled to more, she can hire help or stay somewhere else, period. Edit to add. Until a year ago, I was in college and my salary was very low as I worked part-time as a waitress. My parents paid most of the bills, as they had done all the years we've lived in this house, so this is why I do not expect rent from anyone. Edit 2 to add. So, after going over most of the comments and realizing I am not crazy, I had a talk with my sister. Prior to this, she had told me she was happy she'd have me around to help, but nothing more. Parents and extended family have been calling me the a-hole, and I, wrongly I admit, assumed my sister was involved. She told me she had no idea this was going on. She added that she has no expectations of me, aside from maybe occasionally washing clothes or looking after the baby for short intervals, so she can use the bathroom, shower, eat, which I replied I'd be happy to do. She also said she'd have a talk with parents about their treatment, so I'm waiting to see where this leads to. I've been married for five years. I've been friends with Andrew since high school. He's an aspiring artist who just hasn't caught a break, though he is supremely talented. For our wedding, Andrew painted a custom landscape, which is essentially the view of the mountains in Arizona, from my dad's gravesite. It's a beautiful painting. My wife and I own about a dozen condos and houses, which we verbo and Airbnb. Our favorite is one in Scottsdale, and because the painting is an Arizona theme and matched for decor, that is where we hung it. Well, we had a guest stay with us recently, and he had heard of my friend's artwork. He asked me where I got the painting, and I told him actually he was my good friend. The guest asked if I could put him in touch with each other, and I said certainly. Well, I guess my friend was in one of his brooding artist's moods, and refused to paint something for the Airbnb guest. The guest asked me if I'd consider selling the painting, and jokingly I said, yeah, for $25,000. He asked me if I'd accept an equivalent amount in Bitcoin, and I was like, holy crap. We don't need the money, but my friend's stepson does. So I agreed, and my wife and I basically used the money to start a 529 for the stepson.
When I told my friend, he was furious at me. I told him I got why he was mad, but dude, this is the break he's been looking for, and I'm not keeping a penny of the money. And this guy has money and connections, and that's the way artists start making a living. Andrew is furious because he didn't grow up with a dad, so my dad was sort of a surrogate and the painting was an emotional thing for him. I told him I understood that, but his stepson can now afford at least a year of college, and the Airbnb guest would fall all over himself if Andrew came to his home to see the painting. As of now, Andrew is unwilling to speak to me. This may have ruined our friendship, but I was honestly doing it for him and his stepson, but did I overstep here? Yes, the a-hole. You don't sell gifts that someone gave you, especially handmade ones. Yes, the a-hole. Sorry, but you definitely should have asked your friend if you could sell the painting. Yes, it was technically yours to do with as you pleased, but it was done, A, as a wedding gift for you, B, custom for you, C, of the view from your father's grave. Granted, you were wanting to help out your friend and his stepson, but I am sure that your friend is insulted that you got rid of something that had a big piece of his heart in it. Not to mention that obviously something about the buyer just didn't click with your friend. So to see that piece of himself in the hands of that person is only adding insult to injury. If you truly value this friendship and the money really doesn't mean anything, I would honestly see if you could buy the painting back. It won't solve the problem, but it will be a good start to repairing the friendship.